Welcome to my sewing room. My sewing room is one of my favorite places. It is the place where I can be alone and be creative. I am surrounded by my special collection of patterns and fabrics, as well as the machines that make sewing fun. What would we do if every seam had to be hand sewn as it was years ago? We would certainly have to slow down. Well, that is what the doctor has ordered today. We're going to relax and enjoy these wonderful sewing projects, all designed especially for you. There are so many wonderful details that make a really good looking finish to a fabulously stylish woman's jacket. This happens to be one of them. This is called Spanish Hem Stitching and it joins two bias pieces. Really, really fabulous. Just a little tiny bit will do. Come on down to the bottom of this wonderful jacket which has beautiful machine embroidery around the bottom of the jacket as well as the sleeves. Now once again, this really pretty Spanish Hem Stitching is used to join the contrasting fabric to the bottom of the jacket. How is it done? Well, you know my favorite word is easy, so it is very, very easy to do. You use a one quarter inch bias binder foot and it actually folds the fabric and stitches it all at the same time. And please use invisible thread and you can see how this piece is finished. The invisible thread means you can't see it, so that's a good thing. Now put two of these together and then do your hem stitching, your Spanish hem stitching, and it joins the two pieces. I thought you would enjoy seeing also this very special designer detail used around the sleeves of this shell, also around the neck. Now this is a very special open work plate and foot which can be used to hold the fabric pieces apart. You know there isn't just one stitch that you use to, for this Spanish hem stitching. Here is a stitch. There are several stitches you can use. The key is to keep the fabrics apart and get the look of joining the fabrics while using your creative stitches on your sewing machine. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my friend Sue Houseman. Sue is the host of the PBS series, America Sews with Sue Houseman. Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. And I just love this outfit and it's such fun to make and such fun to wear. Oh, and those details. I, I love know. the designer details. Well, let's talk a minute. You showed the bias strip that actually is put through the bias binder, which creates that bias strip that is finished and using the invisible thread, but but here you see now the finished neck, for example, of the uh, blouse or the edge of the ruffle edge and this finished bias strip that we created. And then we're going to put them together in that special way with those decorative stitches to create an open work effect. And it's so easy. Now, there are lots of different threads you could use. Okay, a 30 weight cotton, a 12 weight cotton. These look the same, but the 12 weight is much thicker. And if you're using a thick thread, you'll want to use a top stitching needle because it has a larger, longer eye and it also has a deep groove in the front of the needle for that thread to ride in so it doesn't flag out and get caught. Also, I like the 30 weight. I think this is beautiful, the 30 weight rayon. One thing you'll want to be sure is that you match your bobbin because you're going to see both the top and the bobbin thread in this case because it's in the open work place. Now, you can see here how once those were stitched, they were actually matched up close together and that little trim was added. Now this isn't limited, by the way, to a bias piece of trim. Underneath, you'll see that we have the cuff of the jacket to put along the edge. But the one thing you'll want to remember is that this is always done on two finished edges. Okay. So serge, turn under, press, and this is the cuff, which was actually finished into a tube. And then go to your machine. Now some people may have this type of a a plate that you snap in with a distance or a filler, uh, something that actually spaces the fabrics evenly. If they don't, they can space them manually or put them on a piece of stabilizer. Uh, we suggest not using a tie off at the beginning and then just pick your favorite stitch to do this with. And I've picked mine. Um, what I would suggest to your viewers is that they actually practice with lots of different stitches and just kind of play around on scraps because any of your forward reverse action pretty stitches that 
have a wide width and you want to be at a six or seven width on this, you will see create that wonderful open effect. Now, oh, is that beautiful, beautiful or is see, that beautiful? Is really, really beautiful. Now, I think that you used that on the skirt also, didn't you? We sure did. And the same thing. Cute little skirt. Those edges were finished with the rolled edge on the serger and then each edge was finished. So again, you're working with two finished edges because this is not gonna finish off those edges. It's gonna catch finished edges by working with an open work side to side. And so you can see there that then the decorative stitch with that spacer or distance plate actually kept them apart and made it a beautiful open work effect to attach the ruffle in this case. Oh, Sue, that is fabulous. Thank you so much. For, and it looks really easy to do, too. Thank you so much, Sue. You're welcome. And next, we have some sewing inspirations for you. We have so many inspirations for you. Machine embroidery on women's clothing is just fabulous. Is this good looking or what? All the way around the bottom of the jacket, the machine embroidery is done on the sleeves, I think this is just so stylish and I, I just love to know that this was actually made on a sewing machine. Sue, share with us a little bit about this wonderful embroidery. Well, Martha, one of the most fun things today when you have an embroidery machine is that you get to look for lots of exciting new embroideries. And in this case, I was inspired by the dots on the green fabric okay. and, <laughs> and went looking for a dot embroidery. And the good thing is that even if it's shown in the book in a different color, you simply take and match your threads to what you're doing and create it in the colors that goes with that go with your project and that's what's really cool uh, the other great thing today is that most of these designs all come on a multi-format CD so no matter what embroidery brand you own you can use the designs in my case I put them on this embroidery stick and put them in and then went to town using the hoop that does endless embroidery so you can see on the machine right now now I have the strip hooped and this would have been my whole jacket bottom and the bottom of my sleeves also. Sometimes you wonder what to do with all of the excess fabric and you can see that if you roll it on a big tube now because this was the back of the jacket like a, a tube from wrapping paper works very well because oh, it's long oh, great and idea. Uh, yeah and the, the a fusible paper stabilizer is fused to the wrong side so just roll it up and do one embroidery and then you simply release the hoop and slide down and there actually are special stitches to match to be able to match the next step of that embroidery. Oh this is a wonderful wonderful invention. So that's how we did the embroidery all the way around the bottom. Oh, now show I just a little bear <laughs> for inspiration. Had to bring up this little guy because he actually was made in the hoop all his now, pieces. Wait a minute, the whole bear was made in the hoop. All his pieces, oh. his little feet are done as you're embroidering, <laughs> his little hands, his face, his vest. Actually, there are three different vests you can make for him. So you, the kids can the change or you can change his clothes. How about big kids like me that <laughs> right. love teddy bears? Isn't that fun? So I wanted to be sure and share that this is some of the fun thing, the fun things that are happening in embroidery today. Oh my goodness. Now I love this. Tell us a little bit about what we have here, Sue. Well, actually this was just a plain white shirt. Purchase Purchased shirt. Purchased shirt. And you can see down along the bottom the embroidery anglais designs. So these were the embroidery, the embroidery anglais and they aren't they beautiful? Absolutely. It looks exactly as if it came from the, uh, the factories in Switzerland. It's so beautiful. Well, and you can probably imagine that I did this also in that hoop. Okay. It has no end so that you didn't have to re-hoop manually. It just connected, connected, connected very, very easily. Um, another fun thing is the collar. And let's bring that down. There's your collar, which is another one of the edging type designs done in the hoop. And you do the first step and then trim and then the final step is done off the edge. So you don't have to trim this afterward. But the, the sleeves are probably the big kick. Um, so they funny. actually are old curtains. <laughs> so the, the white sleeves were cut out of the, the actual shirt and the curtain sleeves. Now, the other thing I think that just makes it, and then we see a lot in ready to wear today, are all those different buttons. So go in that button box. And of course, you know how to do a buttonhole on your sewing machine and buttonholes are easy. So just add a buttonhole for every one of them. Because you have lots of buttons down here. So you just yep. put extra buttonholes in this purchase shirt. Now, right. how did you do that collar? Well, the good news about uh, cutting off a sleeve is that gives you some scraps to work on. 
okay. And so here you see that this was hooped and the first step was stitched, then trimmed, and then the final step stitched. Uh, truthfully, first I thought I was gonna do white on it and it just didn't show up. And I knew okay. it probably wouldn't show up on the show. I actually have the sleeve that was one of the sleeves that was cut off under here, so you could get the idea of that. But what's even more fun is to see the actual curtain sleeve. So that is so fun. And here's the curtain label. You can see 90 inch curtains. Cutting up a curtain. Isn't that fun? This is so cute. We talk, oh, tell us, look at this little sweater. I'll take the little scarf off. Well, the scarf was sort of integral to the sweater okay. because you, no, you don't, don't want to leave it on there, but I was going to show that that actually was a strip and rolled edged with the overlock or the serger down each side and then buttonholes made oh. in the sweater and then cut and actually those weren't look, buttonholes done all the way on the back also and those were buttonholes done in the broidery anglais with the endless hoop okay so that they are designed to be woven like that so that you can wind ribbon through them anything you'd like but in this case we uh, put the scarf through it and gave a special effect so that was an embroidery design if people don't have a buttonhole embroidery design then they could do it with regular buttonholes oh my goodness just oh. stabilize that sweater well with either a wash away stabilizer or you could fuse the trico onto the wrong side. This is fascinating. Isn't that I fun? think these were wonderful sewing inspirations. And now we have some scrapbooking ideas for you. We are having so much fun with scrapbooking. Sue, I cannot wait for you to share what you have brought. Well, thank you, Martha. And I want to remind our viewers that scrapbooking is not just for paper and pictures. Right. That sewers like to keep their wonderful heirloom or maybe treasures from their family, in this case, a handkerchief or embroidery designs in the scrapbooking supplies, or why not make a quilt block and then Aww. slip it in? Or you had a great idea, Martha a quilt block that maybe you have that isn't quilted from your grandmother. And you could tell the whole story of how the quilt was made. So it's really fun to remember that it's not just for pictures. But speaking of pictures, I wanted to remind viewers too that with the new printers and the new copiers, you can turn color or black and white pictures into sepia tones and really get a fun effect and then journal with your sewing machine as well. But the first thing when you're going to scrapbook is actually to choose the pictures. And that's the hard part sometimes. Oh, is. But try to choose a theme. In this case, I had lots of grandchildren pictures. And once you've chosen that theme, I chose it around the water. You want to crop out, cut those pictures down, and just have what's important. And it might be the scenery. It might be the child. In this case, because she's on a ball, I might just trim it down to a ball. Then pick colors that go with your theme. Obviously, the orange wouldn't be too good for the scenery theme. But here, then, once I've done that, I've got the beautiful beautiful theme of the uh, water and you can see that we've stitched how about waves okay. these side stitcher waves this is going to be ocean pictures little huh? ocean pictures little stippling pic stitches and things so stitch up those fabrics or those papers and you use a 80 pound quality paper a size 80 needle and I use my non-stick foot for that Lengthen your stitch out as far as it'll go. Don't forget lots of buttons and trims and other neat things. Little button holes even make great little Aww. eyelet holes. Really fun to use. And when you're finished, you're going to have a great scrapbooking facing pages. Always do two facing pages. So when you open the scrapbook, you see matched pages. Oh, yeah. And here again, the blues that match catching a wave at Malibu Beach with those grandkids. This one's stitched, the, the yarn is stitched on, but the actual tag is loose. And of course, we've got the little buttons that are fish, and they're one of he's one of them's caught. And I <laughs> wanted to remind people too that they could make little pockets with fabric or with, in this case, vellum, a little straight stitch vellum. Isn't that kind of fun to be able to put additional pictures in? So it's really fun. Stick some buttons on, do some decorative stitches and scrapbooking can be great fun and the children love to do it too. Oh my goodness, I think we all love to do that and especially with our sewing machines. Thank you, Sue. And next we have some machine embroidery techniques for you. Wow, do we have some magic for you. 
I'm so happy to have my friend Lindy Goodall, who is with Cactus Punch, who is going to really, really share some excitement. Lindy, let me hold these up and you just tell right, our viewers Lindy. how fascinating this is. Well, we love to put these borders on and it's very difficult to do them when you only have a regular hoop, but we have a new accessory hoop that's available that you can do endless borders just forever and ever. And that's how I've done these little doll dresses. So this little boy in rose dress, and this little school jumper. Look at the one, two, three ABCs. And these were just regular designs that I combined and then made them in to an endless hoop embroidery. And look here, we'll just turn it around so we can see that it goes all the way around this little doll dress. Is this adorable? Wouldn't that be cute on a child's dress oh, too? Oh, it would. And I think we have more endless borders here mm -hmm. on this good looking pillow. I took red work designs and made them white. Oh, this is fascinating. And, and you made the whole strip, just kept yes, on I sewing did. and kept this on is sewing? This three widths of fabric that I just kept sewing the same design endlessly. Now, I really, 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 you know I love Ayrshire oh, embroidery. Know. This, tell me this was not done totally on an embroidery machine. It was. Oh my goodness, it looks like it's a hundred years old. The tucks tell us weren't about done it. on the embroidery machine, but everything else was. And this, Although this was not done in an endless hoop, it was short enough to do in my large hoop. If you want need to do a larger one, these kind of hoops would be perfect for this technique. Oh my goodness, let me just turn this around. I can truly tell you this looks like it's 100 years old. It looks like it should be in a museum. I brought this just for you, Martha. Oh, I know you did. With the Ayrshire embroidery, it looks so much like. And then there's sort of a, a, a wing needle entredeau in there. And the back, did, were these all these little pieces made, little strips made yes, in the hoop? Yes, they were all made in the hoop, and then this was cut out and so attached, beautiful. and all the instructions are on the CD with the, the bonnet designs. Well, this is just a masterpiece. Now, please show me exactly how this works. All right. Here I have a purchased child's garment, and I've coordinated some designs on the T-shirt with some borders on the, the pants to lengthen the pants. I mean, some pants, they just get too short. And let's face it, some little girls' skirts today, they just don't cover enough. They're a little too short. And so to you begin can use with. this right. to, to put it on. Now, what I did to make sure that my frogs exactly matched up all the way around was I printed them out. And once I printed them out, I found out I only needed two repeats to go around each leg. So I sewed two repeats, then I left a gap, and I sewed two more repeats. And that gap was to allow me to have seam allowances so I could match them up. Now, if you want to do a really long piece, for example, this piece I'm going to be making into a belt. And so I've just sewed from one end to another end. On a child's uh, garment, you don't need extra length. So just one with the fabric works. And if you look and at- And what does that say? It says, I love frogs. How cute. So I it goes frogs. with my little garment. I have garment. one granddaughter who really loves frogs. This is for the tomboy granddaughter. <laughs> well, that's right. And the ones who love animals and snakes and insects. Exactly. Uh -huh. Oh, that's so darling. So at the machine, I've already sewn two repeats. And what happens is I've set up my design so a little Z stitch sews at the beginning and the end of each design. And this, this hoop works a little bit differently. It has a clamping mechanism. So all I have to do is slide to my next position. And what I like to do is advance in my design until it is at the very beginning. And you know what? I just released it from the hoop, but that's okay. So I'm gonna advance to the first stitch, and then I'm just going to slide my fabric up so that it lines up with that Z. And I do have it stabilized. And once it's- With what, Lindy? I'm just using a tearaway under here, okay. just a regular tearaway. And I'm going to put the clamp down. And now the first part that sews in this design is also a Z. I don't have to sew it here. All I'm going to do is advance through the design with the needle down and make sure that it exactly lines up. And boy, it exactly lines up. It exactly lines up. And so now all I have to do is touch the start button and sew, and my next set of designs are going to be exactly lined up. Without ever removing it or right. just, just slipping it. Well, Lindy, this is really, really exciting. Thank you so much for sharing these ideas Thank with you, me and with our viewers. And next, I have a wonderful home decorating project for you.
I have a wonderful log cabin pillow to show you today. And you know, I just want you to look at how easy this is to make. Log cabin is easy. You can see we have the darks on the outside, the whites on the inside. And one of my other favorite things, in addition to log cabin, cabin quilting, is red work. This time the red work has been done by machine. I have to share with you that log cabin can be done either with a sewing machine or with a serger. And actually, it's so easy to do that if you're working with a child, teaching a child beginning quilting, log cabin is a great pattern to teach a child beginning quilting. When I look at this, I'm very much reminded of my grandmother because my grandmother loved to quilt, but she was a school teacher. So it took her, uh, you know, she really taught school all day and had very little time to quilt. And you know, she loved this pattern, so I guess it was easy and I also think it was fast. But this pillow, and also my grandmother loved red work. So this pillow reminds me very much of my grandmother and it's very easy to make and I have a couple of tricks for you. As a matter of fact, you are going to love this trick. Um, when you cut your log cabin strips, this is a paper towel roll. The log cabin strips, the lights and the darks are wrapped around this paper towel roll so they won't get all messed up and wrinkled. And then they're each one pinned, pin here, pin here, all the way down. And you can actually roll off and cut off just the amount that you like. And if you really wanted to be creative, you could actually put this paper towel roll on a paper towel holder, you know, the kind that sits up and just pull your log cabin strips off. I thought you would like that sewing trick. Now let's see how easy it is to do log cabin. First of all, you start out with a square, which I have under here and put a white piece down, straight stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance or serger, you can use a serger, fold it out. First of all, I've got to trim it off. You do a straight seam. All right, I'm gonna trim off the piece. Uh-oh, and then I'm gonna fold it and press. All right, the next piece that goes down is the next white piece. Straight stitch it, fold it out, and press. And then I move all the way around using white lights on one side, darks on one side. Now my finished piece, although I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger to make this pillow, my finished piece looks like this. Darks on one side, whites on one side. Now I made four of these in order to make that wonderful pillow with the white on the inside. Okay, here are two of them. You see the whites are on one side and the darks are on one side. So I pin them together and I stitch them and you can see how that wonderful pillow came to be. Now after the pillow top is finished, that is when you're going to do your machine embroidery or certainly hand embroidery if you prefer to do hand embroidered red work, but it's a lot easier to do it by machine and really quickly done. And here is this wonderful pillow again, very easy to make. And you know what, if you wanted to make this for a special gift, you could also do machine embroidery right in the middle and put a name or an occasion. And there is even enough space around in the corners if you wanted to make like a grandmother pillow or an 80th birthday pillow, put the uh, lady's name in the middle, 80th birthday, and then maybe put the grandchildren and the children's names to machine embroider them around. That would make a nice present. And now I have something really, really special for you. I have an antique baby coat to share. This is an incredible baby coat. Very, very interesting. Um, actually, it belongs to my friend Sue Houseman, and she loaned it to me. The coat is made out of a wool chalet, and it's been washed and washed, so at first glance, I thought it was a gabardine, but it really isn't. It's wool chalet. The coat has a little trim around the top part of the collar, and then this beautiful embroidery. It almost looks like the embroidery anglais that we do on sewing machines, although this was by hand. Let me pull the little collar back so you can see that it has the sleeves, and by the way, they're lined in flannel too. This was really meant to keep a baby warm. If you'll come on down and look at the bottom, you will see that it has more of the embroidery all done by hand, and the coat is lined in a really warm flannel. Now something really interesting underneath this coat, which opens all the way down from the yoke, is a wonderful, really, really heavy flannel slip with embroidery at the bottom and then hem stitching, which of course on the sewing machines we do wing needle entre dough. Let me turn it around and show you how beautiful this little coat is in the back. Once again, it has the collar with the beautiful embroidery. It's kind of an off-white with beige embroidery. And you can just see how beautiful this little coat would have been. 
However, my guess is that this little coat was made not so much for beauty as it was for keeping the baby warm. And my guess would have been that the baby would have worn this coat as an outfit to wear all day long. And when you think about how cold the houses were 100 years ago. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I'd like to invite you back next time. Thank you.